We might do some things different today. Is that okay? Are we up for things different? Like, like you're really going to change your mind anyway. The Holy Spirit. But I want to do some things. I'm going to call you on the hot seat a little bit. We sang a song there about Jesus does. How many know Jesus does? Does he do good things or bad things? I'm going to read you a verse here. I'm just going to quote it and see if it's right. For God so hated the world that he sent his only son. God so hated, God so hated everything in the world that he sent his only begotten son. That's whosoever should cuss him and, and belittle him will just will, will, will make heaven. Is that what it says? It says, for God so what? Love the world. What a verse we've heard it all the time. But how many times in our journey we hear more about we hear more of the things about hate, more things about problem, more things about fear, more things about what's not happened. More if if people if 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 and I'm not picking on that, but I'm just throwing it out there. But I love the heart of the Father when we read the Gospels and read it because it's always about Him wanting us to walk in the fullness of who He's made us to be. And the more we understand that, and the more we understand that identity, issues, problems, things in life happen. You know, I read a, I read something the other day that said that God. Cr don't worry about the storm because God created the storm. And in my, in my heart, that just hurts my heart because if we think God creates the storm for us to go through the storm, then, then why do we need to worry about the storm? And, and what I mean by that is there's things that happen in life. Dave, Dave experienced, there's people that go through things in this journey. Dave, team, but one thing I've learned, and this was a dip, I've been to lots of places, lots of funerals, lots of things, and I've heard people say like, God, God took them. God took them. And, and I wrestled that for a long time because that broke my heart. If a God full, if goodness and mercy are chasing me down, and then we say something like that, doesn't that kind of, it's like ding-dongism, oxymoronism. And, and one day I was praying, and I prayed, I was reading, it said, it, it, it rains on the righteous, it rains on the righteous. Good things happen to good and bad people, translation. But what I've also discovered is, I give you an analogy that it says that Jesus Jesus conquered all principalities, dominions of all different things. He conquered those things for us. So in my mind, when I say my mind, I've learned that death is no respecter of anybody. It comes after the little, the old, in between. It comes after everybody and anybody you can take. But the difference is that I've understand is Jesus stepped in the ring and said, death, you've been messing around with these people too long and I'm here to do something different. And he's the one that wrestled death, hell and the grave and conquered it and says, I hold the keys to it. And I'm the one, and what I mean by that is when, when those things happen, it's not because God is taken. Just watch this one word. God doesn't take, he receives. Amen. He steps in and says, I'm here to receive. I'm here to receive. And, and think of the difference in that. Think of how would that help your heart this morning. A lot of times we think God, God take, no. What he did is took away the power of sin, took away, took away the power of darkness to consume and control your reality and how you view yourself and how you view life. And he brought light into the world that says you are a new creation. You've been, you've been made complete and whole. As far as the east is from the west, I'm never taking a, a, a record of your wrongs anymore. What I'm here to do is give you the gift of the Holy Spirit to every day empower you and to call you up into who you are in me. That we are in union, in relationship, and in through that union and relationship, yes, things will happen, but you'll find that there's peace, there's comfort, there's clarity, there's, 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 there's things that are going to take place that are going to minister to you, heart, that only the Holy Spirit can do and the love of the Father can minister to you. It's not about all the answers. How many here got all the answers? Why, 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 why? I mean, I've had lots of whys. And I've learned one day that I'm just going to, I was getting exhausted trying to discover all the whys. And I'm just going to start, like, like Jimmy said, is I'm going to keep looking at who I belong to. I'm going to look into the who of who's and begin to trust that. And as begin to trust that and rely on that, I had to ask myself, am I willing to receive? Am I willing to step in? Am I willing to, to embrace this new creation, this grace, this such? So a lot of us in this room probably got saved or received Christ because we didn't want to go to hell. Most of us got saved because they painted a picture of fire and brimstone and we were, that's me, that's me, that's me. And then, and I'm not picking on that, but what happened is in that journey, that's great. But we, we, but we had a, 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 a picture that we were just getting into heaven someday, somewhere down 75 years, 100 years of our life, but, no one, but we never learned that we can live and allow heaven to embrace our earth right here and right now. 
And so many people, even the Christians, they, they, they're, they're hurting, they're struggling, they're frustrated. They have, there's lots of things going on. And yet at the same time, there's such, there's such a gift of life and, that's been given to us. And a lot of times, all that stuff tries to come in and suck that out of us to look at other directions. Make, make in, 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 and then, then there's other times we're just living life and things happen. And things just happen. And uh, today I'm going to just take a few minutes before I move on. But uh, can I use you two for a minute? Yeah, we've talked a hundred different ways. And I'm just going to call you up on this. On the, I'm going to call you up to the deck. So come on up here. This is, this is some people that I met. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Beckerman. There was, those are probably their grandkids. Are those your grandkids? Yeah. We're going to pray for you. Three of 15. <laughs> Three of 15. But I want them to share a story. We met back years ago. They ride their spiders. And they ride spiders. And uh, they started hanging out with church. They're part of the, part of the buddy's family. And I don't know all the blueprints about them. But I know that God loves them. And God cares for them. And, and along the journey, I remember along the journey that they were involved in a motorcycle accident. Mm-hmm. On Interstate 44, 70 miles an hour. And she was thrown off of the machine at 70 miles an hour. Now, what would you expect to happen going off a machine at 70 miles an hour? So, so I asked her just standing here, isn't that a miracle? Then he went through some physical issues a year or so back, and they told him that he might not make it to the next Christmas. So what I'm saying is you're looking here, you're seeing a miracle right here, an impossibility that was made possible. But... I better let you share some. Can you want to share some of your story? Just, just share it. However, don't worry about how it comes out. Okay. I don't talk in front of people, so I'm You're doing a good job. But anyway, um, so I was, we were on the motorcycle, and we were on a ride, and uh, we were following a bike, and my husband put on the brake too far, hard to me, <laughs> and it shaked, and I panicked, and uh, I passed out, and I fell off the bike. I remember hitting going toward the ground and thinking, I need to be off this bike because I, my husband can't get control of it. To me, I had to fall off so that he can control it. Anyway, so I, after I hit the ground, I don't remember anything except for I just bought my new helmet 20 minutes before I got onto that bike, a face, full face, and I said, I just bought this helmet. And then I passed out again until I stopped rolling. And, um, and then I got up and my husband pulled around. The h- highway stopped. There was a diesel behind us um, and he pulled out and I'm standing to the side before he got back to me. And um, so he come over to me and he asked me if I was okay. And I said, yeah, I'm fine. And I'm all scarred up from this road rash. Um, and there was a uh, conservation medic, paramedics that was in front of us. They pulled over to take care of me um, and they wanted to know if I needed to ride to the hospital. And I asked my husband, I said, is the bike okay? And he said, yeah, it's fine. And I said, oh no, I'll just ride on the bike. And so I went to the hospital and they didn't, my neck hurt a little bit, but other than that, I was just scars on um, my back. I mean, my neck was fine. And so, God, anyway, so the lady, um, so it happened on Saturday, on Wednesday, I got a message from somebody um, from Iowa. um, Indiana, was it? Indiana, yes. Uh, Yeah, you're right, Indiana. And she said she looked up, she looked up the accident report from that accident. She was coming from Oklahoma to back home, and she seen me fall off the bike and she was praying for me the whole time she was on her way home. And I said, I, I barely remember me falling off other than me want a word about my helmet. I said, can you tell me how it happened? Like, did I roll, did I bounce? I mean, like, I don't know. And she says, I don't know, you were all in white. Well, my helmet was black, my shirt was black, my pants were blue, and I believe I, God protected me that day. And, and what about you? Well, what is it, about a year and a half ago now? Uh, I was diagnosed with cancer. And uh, 
they, uh, they said they might be able to beat it. So we tried some uh, kind of experimental stuff. And uh, after about six months, they couldn't find it anymore. It just, just disappeared. Mm. And so for uh, a year. And along your journey, didn't God put people along your path to encourage you? Yes. Different uh, work people that prayed my, for uh, you, with you? My cancer doctor, the first time we met him, he was wearing the medical pen. And on the other side, he had a cross. And he, uh, he asked us the first time, he says, can I pray with you? And we was more than happy. Hmm. And every session, he would pray with us. So. Beautiful, beautiful. And then on your story now, you say it was a, right, a light, but didn't, didn't at one time, would, could we see that maybe that was the angels wrapping around her and protecting her at 70 miles an hour? I don't know about you. Anybody want to fall off anything at 70 miles an hour? I don't even want to fall in the water at 70, 70 miles an hour. That would be a, it'd probably rip your shorts off and, and, and do things that wouldn't be very. Right. I'm, I was just shocked that the, the diesel that we just passed stopped in yeah. time and not run me over. It's like somebody stuck their hand out and stopped the whole highway. <laughs> yes. and, and it just, now it's saying, we could say how terrible and how tragic, but look, but look at the end there, and I'm going to say it this way, they give God glory and they recognize God's hand in their life in both situations. It wasn't that the situation just vanished, but in the midst of those situations, there was a peace, there was a comfort, and there was an assurance mm -hmm. in their life. And I don't know about you, that's priceless. You can't buy that. You can't buy that or produce that. That's God's, God's presence and tranquility showing up in your life. And maybe, and what I love about the Bible, it says what he does for one, he'll do for somebody else. What he does, he's not a respecter. He'll do the same. So, so I wanted you to hear that. I think that's an amazing story. And I remember when it first happened, they called us up to tell us that they were, I remember saying she was in an accident on the interstate and that, and that she was, nothing was wrong Nothing happened. And when she said she fell off the bike at 70 miles an hour, I was like, and she, oh, I'm good. I'm great. No problems. As church the next day. And you were at church the next day. Isn't that something? <laughs> Stretch your hands this way. Father, we just thank you for the Beckerman family and that you continue just to, to bless them. To, and I just pray that today that they just, there's great encouragement and empowerment in, in your steadfast love to never leave them nor forsake them. Lord, we pray over their family and their family's families. We pray over their, their grandmas and grandpas and mom and dad. We pray for the protection of their children and grandchildren that Lord, you always put them at the right place at the right time and that you do above and beyond what they could ever hope or think and not just in one area, but in all the areas of their life. And we just thank you that that they're always at the top and never at the bottom. That, Lord, they have clarity, direction, and, and understanding and live life to the fullest, the abundant life that you created for them to have and to live in. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. amen. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. And I got one more, but I don't know how I'll go about this. But let me, let me put a verse up here for you for a minute. We doing okay? Yes. For God so hated the world, is that what it says? You've heard that verse, but for God so hated the world that he sent his son. It's not what he did, did he? For God so loved the world. Does he love you? Doesn't mean everything in your world's perfect, but there's a perfect love that's always for you and not against you. But I want to put up Mark uh, chapter 1, verse 40 and 41, I think. And I want to talk, you ever heard of, uh, you ever heard of a guy, you ever heard of the leper? In the Bible there's a story of a man that had, that had leprosy. And it says, now a leper came to him imploring him, kneeling down to him, saying to him, if you are willing, can you make me clean? And the next verse, it says, I am not willing. I don't like being here. My dad made me show up and show up in this place and nobody listens or understands me. So I'm just going to ignore you and go on and do my own thing. Is that what it says? It says, it says, uh, it says, then Jesus moved with, moved with, didn't say he felt sorry for you. Didn't feel it. It wasn't his moral duty. We just got back into the simple verse of John, for God so loved. Then Jesus here says he's moved with compassion, stretched out his hand, and beat him. I'm just being that way just, just to be that way. I'm trying to drive a point here that he reached out his hand and did what, Jimmy? It says he touched him and said to him, I am willing 
go out and do your best. Is that what it says? Hope you make it. Come and see me in 75 years. What does he say? He said, he just said, be clean, be cleansed, be cleansed. But does anybody, in the world we live in, do many people, do many people here, uh, you ever been across somebody that was, had leprosy? Nobody? But back in that day, leprosy, it was a big enough deal in leprosy that if you go back to Leviticus chapter 13, there's a whole chapter or two. And if you go to the go to Leviticus, they had lots of sanitary and customs and different things they had to do. It was a big ordeal of, of what they had to do and how they had to go through. It was a, it was a big enough ordeal that, it's, that, that there was a, a bunch of things they had to do because if you had leprosy and then you had to go to the priest and show yourself and, 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 and he declared you clean or unholy or dirty. How do you like that word? Dirty. Clean or dirty. So, and the, job, and the job of the priest was to declare you clean. And if you were dirty, guess what? You were excommunicated from your, from your tribe, from your people. I'm here like being excommunicated. But, but in the sense here, it says Jesus, but, but if, if I use the word leper, it's just two verses, but there's so much that we could grab from that because how many people in life, how many people in life have felt like a leper? Excommunicated. And one of the things I love is, is Jesus touched them. And if you know anything about leprosy, are you supposed to touch somebody with leprosy? Are you supposed to touch a leper? And a leper's mind is, I'm dirty, and he has to walk around with a bell, or he has to shout, I'm unclean, I'm unclean. And he had to have certain, his clothes had to be torn, he had to cover part of his face. I mean, it was a big ordeal. So his identity became, I'm a leper. Now, just think about that for me for a minute, where the Bible talks about, you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. It says, Behold, the old has gone away. I'm just I'm drawing that out there. But how many times when it comes to, I'm going to use the word leprosy, how many times do we see people in a sense have leprosy, maybe, maybe through shame or guilt or condemnation, it just eats on them. That becomes their identity. And then they get, metaphorically, they, they've got a ripped heart or ripped clothes and they cover themselves up and, and, they, and isolation is the best choice for them because this identity of whatever it is has so consumed them that, that, now think about this, there's no communication, there's no connection, there's, how many here like, you know, we like to be told, my, I've been married for Shauna for almost 30 years, and I still like it when she says, I love you. But now, I know she loves me, but isn't it so much nicer to hear that I love you? Isn't it nice to know that you, isn't it nice to know that you, that you're wanted or liked or included in something? How many like to be ex, how many family things we got on? Well, they invited, my mom invited me, but not her. Or they did this and not this. And we, we run rampant with all the different things that are going on um, in our world. And then we create all these thoughts and ideologies that most of the time create separation and isolation. And in the, and I call it a leprous mindset, but, but there comes a point in leprosy where how many here want to live with that type of identity? How many been told all your life you're no good? Been told all your life you're a leper, you'll always be a leper, you're never amount to nothing but being a leper. So you live your life isolated, no connection, no, now watch this, no one touching you, no one holding your hand, no, no uh, dialogue and back and forth. All you do is live in, in, live in being hungry, being left alone, being powerless, being empty, and your reality becomes of that of such that when you look around, you have no hope, no direction, nothing. But then you hear about Jesus. Or you hear, just like this leper, he heard about Jesus healing and touching and impacting people's lives, that he began to seek out this one who can make someone who is dirty and unclean and make them clean. Isn't that something? So... Faith comes, Romans 10, 19 says, faith comes by freaking out and running, telling God all your problems. Faith comes by hearing, hearing what? Hearing the word of God, hearing. And that whole chapter is about hearing how you've been put in right standing with God. How many like right standing? How many like to be put in right standing, not based on your merit, but on his merit? How many like to know it wasn't based on, wasn't just based on uh, you, it wasn't based on you. It was based on you believing and receiving that new, that new way of living. It was, you, it was you based on realizing, you mean I don't, I don't have to identify myself as a leper? I don't have to identify myself, identify myself as, as, as this anymore? And I know a lot of times with leper, that, 
there was there was pain involved, there was hurt involved, there was all, how many how would you imagine if you you I'm gonna use a guy you you get leprosy you really like this girl but she keeps telling you're a leper and nothing you can do can win her over because you're a leper just just bear with me it's an example but how many of us in life we try to do things but but that leprosy mindset that leprosy uh, attitude or or even a spirit i'm gonna call it even a spirit of, of leprosy that i'm no good and unworthy. how many people you see in your world deal with that they deal with the they deal with the lack they deal with the the being poor they, they when i say poor you can be you can have everything on the planet and still be poor on the inside so i'm not talking all of that stuff plays in there but being poor i think is a mindset and it's and it's a way you see life i've seen some of the people who have nothing we're the richest people on the planet and I've seen people have everything, and they were the poorest people on the planet because they, didn't, they, were, they had the leper mindset. No matter how good you tried to put the clothes on underneath, they were still a leper. You following with me on this? Well, we, I even had, I made the deal with you, Shauna, we're talking. A leper, a lot of times, how many have ever felt like you've been left or lack in your life? Or, or how many have ever felt empty? Empty. Empty, 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 empty. What's the em empty is the opposite of full. How many of you ever felt powerless? How many of you ever felt powerless and poor? Poor, poor, I believe poor is such a, a mindset in the world that needs to be attacked and changed. Mindsets. Because something good could be going on and right away we got to attack it with a poor mindset. God loves you, then we'll use the word but. God cares for you, but. God's for you, but. God, God, you know, a lot of times, a lot of people I tell, you know, I, salvation is, is changed my world and, 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 and words like, and words like grace has completely changed my world. And, and people say, well, that's just a fad going through. It's going to move on. But what I've learned, what I've learned is, 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 is I've embraced, if I've embraced that identity and that grace and that love, it continually, there's a continual learning and growing and changing that is amazing to me because just by the time you think you, you understand it, you learn a whole lot more. And, and when I've learned about the mindset of being poor is a lot of people don't want to learn and grow. They just want to live in that poor mindset. You know how many people I talk to during the week? Oh, it's bad, preacher. It's bad. It's, it's really bad. And, and I'm not picking on, are there things bad? You know, you know there's problems in the world. And then I talked the other day, we got to define problems. There's some real problems. Now, just because your Gucci Gucci purse is broke, that don't, that's, that, you know, but you, that might be a problem. Someone else trying to put gas in their car could be a problem. How do we define problems? It could be all in different, different plateaus, different places on our, on our journey. But, but in reality, the same mindset is the same. Things are good, but a poor mindset never has any hope. Poor mindset is always looking for a way out there. Poor mindset is always one day, someday, I'll get off the yellow brick road. Someday I'll find a heart and a brain and some courage. When the Bible says that that old man was passed away, that lepros the leprosy mindset of that has been taken away in Christ, buried, and you have been raised a brand new creation in Christ and allow the, new, allow the newness of life to empower you. I don't have to have a poor mindset anymore. And that's not just positive thinking. It's not just a super, I'm going to be super positive today. No, I'm just going to keep, nanu, 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 I'm going to keep believing. Click my heels three times. And then, and I'm just going to keep believing. Ah, is there a song, is there a song about believing? Don't, I don't know how it goes, but anyhow, it clicked in there. Is that an 80s song? You'll know what it is. Don't stop. Journey. And, and a lot of times what happens with that poor mindset is it cancels out everything else good in, that's going good in your journey. That poor mindset will cancel out everything that's going on. And the only thing you're waiting for is the cloud to roll back and the bus ride to take off. When the Bible continually tells and reaffirms that he wants to bring heaven to your earth. He wants to tip, tip heaven in your direction. And a lot of times with a poor mindset, you'll receive it, but you'll never want to learn and change anything about the direction because you still want to validate the poor mindset. You still want to be validated as this poor mindset. These issues are real. These issues. Are... Do you think the man with the leper, he had a real, he had a real issue? He had a real issue, but he, I'm going to use this. He came to the end of himself and says, I've got to reach out. I'm going to reach out. 
I've heard so much about Jesus, I'm going to reach out and I'm going to ask him. No, I'm going to ask him if he is willing, willing. Now, that was a man that had no connection. He was excommunicated from the church world, the, the tabernacle, wasn't allowed to be around anybody. He dressed in rags, was empty, hungry, poor, and lacking, but yet, but yet there was a glimmer of hope because he'd heard about a person named Jesus. They can take what's dirty and make it clean. Can take what's sick and make it and make it whole. Can take what's wrong and make it right. Are you following me? And what I love about this in my mind as I read, as I see this, is Jesus. Is Jesus? This man didn't just need an encouraging word for the day. He just didn't need to say, "Hey, buddy, I'm willing. Good to see you." What Jesus showed up, and what amazes me is Jesus reached into that to that leper and he touched him. Think about that and all the times of his journey, he's never had anybody to reach in and have compassion and touch him and love on him. And I picture it this way. Jesus didn't just go, excuse me, he didn't just go, ooh, I think I, I see him going out in big arms and just wraps him and said, I'm more than willing. And that man, that man had to probably, oh my goodness, there's a song, he touched me, oh, he touched me. No, nah, something, no, nah, how do I forget how it goes? And something happened, and now I know he touched me, and it goes on. I don't know, but when, when God, when you see, when, and here's the deal, I said, he wants to reach out, he always is reaching out, he always reaching out with big arms to touch you, and to hug on you, and to love on you. And, and that man, at that point, how many, oh, he needed that touch? How many have needed someone just to give you an arm, or just to stretch out a hand, and just say, hey man, I believe in you, or hey man, uh, I'm just praying for you today. Or somebody just give you a hug. How many ever enjoyed a hug? I don't know what it is about a hug, but I like a hug. Now, I don't like it when you come up. And, you know, last night I was somewhere with my brother-in-law, and we were sitting there, and he just stuck his hand out across and stuck my hand out. I said, whoa, buddy. He just shake my hand. We're good. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, uh, and I believe that the good news, a good, because think about this, and I, and I say think, but Jesus violated every social custom of his time by reaching out and touching this dude. By embracing him, he violated every social custom of his time and said, this man, this man doesn't, his compassion was not just that he needs, I'm going to reach out and let this guy know that he's valued, that he's loved, that he's worth something. His world might be a mess. He might not understand anything. All he's ever known is pain, suffering, but I'm going to reach in and I'm going to give him love and compassion. And I'm, gonna, and I'm not just going to transform him on the outside. I'm going to transform him from the inside out. And as he began to do that and touch him, he re I want you to picture this. He reached out and touched him. He was willing. He said, are you willing? Jesus says, I am willing. And he reaches out, grabs a hold of him, touched him, embraced him, loved on him and said, be cleansed. He didn't say things like, did you learn your lesson? Have you got it figured out? Are you going to come to church on Sunday? Are you going to do this? Are you going to do this? He just, he just reached out and didn't, do, didn't have any dialogue with that. Just reached out and said, be made whole. Be complete. Be full. And I know that's a, a simple two verses, but how many of our journey, sometimes all we need is somebody to hug on us or reach in, whisper in our ear and just say, be, be made thou whole. Be cleansed. Be cleansed. Be mad. Let, let his love transform your heart. How many, of you, how many could tell you that that would mean more to you than all the theological dispensationalism things we could do? Just somebody reaching in, not saying I hate you, but I love you. Not somebody saying you're too dirty. There's an impossibility that's never going to change. But Jesus reaches in and takes what's impossible and makes it possible. And as he does that, and as he does it, and you become aware of that, we talked about last week, as he is, so am I in this world. Therefore, we can have boldness in the day of judgment. I mean, like boldness. And, and boldness only comes from when you, begin, when you know, I'm going to use this word this way, that you know that you know that you know. When you know, when you know, think about stories like this in Ephesians. He was, he, he was you were dead in your sins and trespasses, but he's made you alive. Did you hear it? When, when you were that leper... And you were dead and you were nobody and nothing was worth. He reached in and made you alive in Christ Jesus. He made you alive. And what I love about that is he never walks up and talks about Jesus doesn't walk around going, this, this used to be my leper. 
He was a leper. No, he said, this is a brand new, this is my brother, this is my sister. He has the same glory, the same resurrection power, and the same relationship and unity that I have with the Father has been given to him, been given to you. And the more he understands it and grabs it, the leprosy mindset, that poor mindset, the, the empty, the lost. You know what a strange means? doesn't mean you're strange. It's not a, it's not a Spanish word. A strange. It's not a Spanish. It is, it is, it is that you've been cut off. How many have ever been cut, felt like they've been cut off? Be cut off from family, friends, church, uh, reality, been cut. How many have ever just been, raise your hand. How many have felt like you've been cut off? Or, been, or how many have been cut off? <laughs> and when you've been cut off, does it not mess with your reality? When you've been told you've got too many problems. Oh, you're one of them people. Or you're one of those people. And what I've learned about, even the church world, we get that. But I'm here to tell you, we should, we should see ourselves as a big family. Doesn't mean we come to our house every day and have barbecues and hang out. Do we do life? But when we get together, we stir one another and encourage one another and build one another. Make sense? Not call you out on all your problems, issues, but point you to Jesus. Point you to see that you're not a leper. See that you're not contaminated. That you're not good. But that you are valuable and worthy. And the Bible says you were dead and made alive. But it also says in a few verses later that you are God's workmanship. Ephesians 2.10, how many here, if we could just camp on that, a reminder, reminding you, I'm God's workmanship. I'm not a leper. I am God's workmanship, created by him and through him to do good works. And the only way the good works will ever manifest in your journey is you understanding that you're God's masterpiece. What's it? Look at, hold your hand up. Hold your hand up. Just look at it. Hold, look, at, huh, look at your thumb. How many, how many got the same thumbprint you do? Bible says you're, you, you're, you're uniquely made. Does anybody else have the same fingerprint you do? Even in your thumb, you can look at it and say, that's a masterpiece because there's not another one like it. A masterpiece, there's not another one like it. You're a masterpiece. You're God's favorite, God's dear. He is all about you and wants to reach in, touch you, love you, and help you not just get to heaven, but allow heaven to come into your world every day. It's about, you know, it's about wanting to, you know, I say it all the time, the simplicity is Christ. Christ is, the, it is simple, but that, just because it's simple doesn't always make it easy. Because sometimes in simplicity, I got to learn to be willing to change the way I see, the way I learn, the way, even the way I talk about myself and talk to myself. I, don't, I mean, I don't walk around with way up here. I got to walk around and say, I'm no good. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares. You know, many times, you, I've, I remember one day leaving here, I helped sing. And this dude walks up to me, shakes my hand. He goes, he goes, this is how he said it. Don't, don't, don't. He goes, your singing sucks. And I was like, if I didn't know that already, thank you. But I never, but the point was, instead of me going home and letting that ruin my day and saying, I'm never going to sing again. <laughs> I thank God I had a voice. How many people in the world don't have a voice? So thank God I was, able to, I was able to be the friend of the friend of the friend to the other friend came up so the singer could show up. Does that make any sense? Or, but if I, well, you're, you preach too long. You preach too, you, you preach too, you're hard to follow. I know, try to keep up with me. <laughs> and, 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 and I don't mean to just put, but if I allowed all of that to keep pushing me down, I would be living in lack, empty, and being poor, and, and I'd be looking all around the world trying to find something instead of realizing that I have a relationship with the Father, and the more I develop that relationship and understanding, He begins to help me work those things out, because I'm not against learning. I'm not against listening. I'm not against putting things into practice and changing some of the things. Just because, just because we did it 100 years ago doesn't mean we have to do it today. And the story goes, remember Brother Jim, somebody asked him about the pot, they'd cook the chicken or the ham, how'd that go? And they, they always cut the ham and did something. They did it for years, so everybody made it a tradition. And then finally one day somebody asked, and it was said, it was it a ham or a turkey? It was a ham. And it came down to putting that ham, and they'd cut it and put it in another pan, and it, it come down to, I just didn't have a big enough pan. <laughs> but we made a whole, they made a whole tradition out of that. Instead of saying, you know what, I don't think I'm going to cut the ham today. I'm just going to get a bigger pan. And, and, and what I'm saying, sometimes we've allowed the tradition of things and the mindset of things, and we don't want to change those things. And Jesus is coming along saying, listen, I've given you a new mindset. I've given you a new, a new way of doing life. It's a new and living way. It's a brand new stuff. And can continue to learn and allow that to come out. Doesn't mean that the problems go away, but it means during the problems, the storm doesn't have to get inside. And it's during those times that I can find some comfort and some peace. But, but how many of us can say it's easy to go back to the leper, leperism? 
It's easy to go back and embrace lepperism because we, well, I understand, I understand that pain. I understand that poor. I understand that being empty. I understand that isolation. That reality, that reality is, is the place that I, I, can, I, can, I can jump into and I can embrace. But most of the time when we go there, we quit living. We go numb to everything else and we isolate ourselves and the reality becomes a zero. We're no good to the world and we're no good to ourselves. And then we get that deal, we're going to blame everybody. Don't shout me down now. But as we begin to embrace, or, or it's impossible. How many have thought life is, this Christian life is impossible? I got too many problems going on. What am I doing wrong? How many have got problems? Don't be ready. Oh, no, well, I'm gonna say, none of you that got problems will save me after church. But when you do have problems, I think there's an energy and a strength that takes you beyond being a leper. And I use that word that you can embrace called love. That I live from a place of victory empowered every day. And I know, I know that, that that is something that becomes down to identity and who you are. How many want to have victory? I'm going to tell you, you already got it. How many want to have peace? The Bible says you already got it. How many want to have some comfort? The Bible says you already got it. And the more you understand what you got and know, the less those things will rob you. Because one of the things that guy lost in this, do you think he had any dignity, honor, or respect? If he was going around being a... Being a Jesus hugged him, but you think Jesus gave him some honor and respect when he did that? Made him feel that he was worth something? How many like dignity? How many have been into a place that whew, breaks your heart? I've been into some places, not some places in ministry where you walk in and you're just thinking. And, then, and know what the Lord told you? You give, you, you, treat, you give him some dignity and some love. And the only way you do that is not from love that I have, that love that comes from the Father that comes out. To that when you give people dignity and honor that's shown them that they matter and that they're valuable not going oh and then I, I i've been places where i just leave in tears just leave in tears and and what i've learned is again when you begin to have when you begin to grow in who you are in christ one of the things i think he begins to attack that poor mindset that you don't have to live like this anymore i don't have to live in this shame and this guilt i have to live in all the all this past garbage. I don't have to live with all this baggage and all these things. We, we sing these songs today. Jesus does. He can do for you what he's done for me. Hallelujah. Amen. We should be getting a little excited about that. He can take, what's, he can take a leper and make him clean. How I many like being clean? One of the things I love about classes we do in, in Holy Spirit 101, and it breaks it down, all the things the Holy Spirit's given and does, and then I see it unpack in people's lives effortlessly because they begin to say things like, I've been clean for, I've been clean for 18 months, I've been clean for 30 years, I've been clean for so many days. There's something about being clean that changes us. There's something about knowing that you're clean that changes us. There's something knows about being, well, if I said clean, what about full? And complete. How many here? That, now that's one. How many like to know in Christ you are full and complete? In Christ, that's not a pipe dream. That's a reality. I'm full and complete. I'm not empty. He'll never leave me nor forsake me. How many like that one? How many have ever felt left and forsaken? How much time I got? Oh, we, got we got an hour. I read my book. Put up Colossians 2, 2, 10, 2, 9, maybe. What are, I got verses coming out in my ears. I don't know if I'll get them all. Maybe I will. Can I talk to you? Come up here. Come up here. Everybody say hi to this young man. Now, now you don't know him very well, but I got to know him for the last year or two. His name's Kurt. Kurt Stovall. How you doing? Good. Doing good. And, and on Wednesday, he shared, he shared some things, just simple things. And I was reminded, I was reminded of some of the things that, that he, and one of the things that he shared is the things that he's learned in the last couple of years about his life. And uh, this was a man that at one time that everybody that was close to him disowned him and stayed away from him. Am I saying it right? Mm, yep. And then, and then there was another time, or well, you tell it. You just tell it however you need to tell what it. What was you going to say? I, I was just going to talk about the things that you've learned and the things, you, one of the things you said is you learned to listen, to be a better listener. And you learned that people's lives had changed and how they changed. He listened to what they said. He listened to how their things had changed and he allowed that to, and, and, he, and what did you do with that, to be a better listener? Well, one of the biggest things that I, uh, 
<clears throat> I'm going to borrow from this sign out here that's, it says, uh, nothing plus Jesus equals everything. <laughs> and that, uh, it really started clicking for me last July because I fought it uh, for years. You know, I tried to live right for 30 years from all aspects of my life, from spiritually, physically, my health, financially, to my driver's license status, to everything. I mean, you can just go back everything. In the past year and a half, when I really started, uh, when I changed in here, is when things really started to uh, change for me, and it become easier. I tried for 30 years, and that's the only thing that I've done different, was uh, just start believing in here, and as it come out. It's, uh, it's made things easier. It gets easier every day. Uh, there's a couple things. So I started coming up here last July, and there's two things that's changed. Uh, it's quit smoking, yeah. cigarettes, and gambling. And I know I quit smoking Thanksgiving, but I can't tell you why I quit gambling or when I quit gambling. But I know I used to gamble every dollar I had, you know, and that was just one of the things that I prayed on, and I realized a couple months ago that I didn't gamble no more. It wasn't a problem no more. So. <laughs> now, now, one of the things he said the other day, when, and he's, this is like his only second time, so I think he's awesome. But one of the things that he shared was he didn't remember how all that happened, but he said these are some of the things he did. He began to pray for strength and wisdom to make the right decisions. And thus, that when he, he looked back, and I'm quoting him, that he began to pray. And then when he talked about praying, he's like, well, do I pray in bed, out of bed, on the floor, on the floor? And to listen to him, the genuine and authenticity, because he wanted to honor his, how his life was being changed. But when he began to pray, that prayer was when he looked back, those were those things effortlessly began to change. Because he doesn't really remember when that happened. He just knows that it did. Help me to make decisions and give me strength to, make, to go the right direction. Isn't that the, how simple that is and easy it is? But it took him the time. He took the time to step into that reality. What if he had the poor reality or the poor mindset or the leper mindset? He wouldn't be here sharing this with you. 26 years, he thought his life was an impossibility of being changed and rearranged. He didn't have his driver's license for how many years? 19. 19 years. How, don't tell me how old you are. But he didn't have, did, did, but he didn't have his driver's Did you still drive? Yes. Don't lie. You're in church. But he still drove. But now think about this. As he's driving, he's looking over his shoulder all the time looking for law enforcement. Looking for somebody to recognize him or to pull him over. Now, now, now take that metaphorically and change it around. When you begin to be a new person, a new creation, law enforcement quits chasing you. It quits trying to catch you on something. Now, now what they do when they see him, they come up and shake his hand and tell him that they're honored. And, and, and am I saying that right? They shake his hand and give him dignity, honor, and respect. He's no longer trying to hide over, I got my drive. And now some of you might think that's a, well, we all got it. Is that a big deal for you? Yes. Think about it. He still kept driving. Probably had his dad, I remember telling him, dad was calling, there's one over here, there's one over here, be careful. Can you imagine all the zigzags you had to do in your life to avoid that? Mm -hmm. Now, just in the simplicity of that, wouldn't that be exhausting? Every day, make it, was it you get up, is today the day? Is today the day? Is today the day? It's just, and it happens again. What is he going to do? He can't stop, got to keep going. So any, anything else? Uh, no, not really work. Work? I've really turned work around. You know, at one time the office was locked because of me. You know, and now there's, uh, there's nothing that goes through that office that doesn't go through me. So that's another way I've really turned things around. Isn't it pretty cool? So, my health. Mm. And what do you contribute? Do you just... There's been people put in your life to encourage you and put you that direction. You change spiritually, mentally, physically. And you've got trust. People trust you now, or they didn't. Yeah. How about tell them about your kids? Just take a minute about your kids. <laughs> tell them about your 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 teenage kids. Or yeah. So uh, a few years ago, uh, I got a 13 year old daughter that uh, I got a pretty nasty message from. You know, that couldn't uh, stand me. Wish she'd never met me, and I'd never wish her mother or met her mother, and all these things. You know. And uh, now when I walk into the house, she sticks her finger in my ear, hits me, punches me. You know what I mean? We go to the cow sale every Tuesday and the horse sale once a month together. And uh, So this is the relationship with my kids totally, totally different. To me, that's just as much as a miracle as her falling off that bike at 70 miles an hour. And the angels, and the angels, and, the, and the, that to me, that's the same. That's the same deal. That's a miracle right there. God's 
God's love and, and, and all that manifesting in, in his journey. And it's made a big difference in your journey? Yes. And I just wanted you to hear that. I just wanted you to hear that today. It, and, uh, and I'm thankful I didn't ask him to do that. I just felt this morning we sing these songs, God does, and he can do what he can do. And I just I had him on my heart and all week long, some of the things he said, like, I've learned to be a better listener. I thought, man, if we could just, he slows down, learn to be a better listener, learns to, uh, and, 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 and likes to learn. How many here want to learn? So I'm going to learn. And, and if he would have just said, I've done this for 26 years, I don't need no help. Do you think he'd have been any, he'd got any, anywhere from where he was at? It was him realizing, I need some help, and where I've been getting it hasn't been working. And then he began to embrace a whole different way of doing things. Nobody jumped in and thumped and bumped, just loved on him, encouraged him. And as he began to listen and learn and listen to other people, who, is there anybody in here that's also give you some hope? Uh, there is something that Jimmy said that I forgot to talk about Tuesday there it night. Is. Uh, yeah, as far as that listening, you never know what you're going to pick up from who. Uh, I talked about Tuesday night. Something I picked up from a guy was a guy that I did not like. I could not stand him. You know, just the thought of looking at him. But he, he said one thing. He asked me if I made my bed every morning and told me to do the next right thing. And that resonated with me 18 months ago. And I've, to this day, I've made my bed every morning. You know, and it's something like I didn't like the guy. Another thing was Jimmy, and I forgot to talk about it that I'll never forget, was he come into a meeting one night, and he was talking about a Hall of Fame baseball player. And he said, you know, somebody can fail seven out of ten times and still have a 300 batting average and still go to the Hall of Fame. So people make mistakes, or, you know, not nobody's perfect. But, uh, and I'll never forget that the night Jimmy said that in there was, I thought, yeah, okay. You he know. took that personally. Yeah, didn't I you? did. I'll, I'll never forget it. <laughs> he so. applied it to his life. So list, listening paid off. There it is. So in Jesus, he hits a home run every time. Amen. Let's stretch your hands towards him. Father, we thank you for Kurt. We just thank you for the, just the, for the moments that he took just to share he, uh, his, his life and how it continues to change and be rearranged. And, and Father, we just thank you that you're that your, your grace and your goodness and mercy can continue to chase him down, that he is, he is living in, the, in, the, in your fullness, that he is your masterpiece, that he, he is dearly loved and cherished. And Father, we just thank you that he, you just continue to give him uh, the right mindsets, that you continue to, his, his heart continues to be transformed. We, we thank you and praise you for restoration with, with parents, with, with siblings, with, with his children, with his work, with his, with his relationship with you. Lord, we thank you that that's all what was impossible was made possible. And Lord, I pray for everybody in this room today that maybe they feel, that maybe they just feel maybe, maybe lost or they feel like that leper, that Lord, that you stepped in the arena and you changed all that around so that we could have hope, we could have comfort, we could have direction, we could have a sound groundness to every area of our lives. And I thank you for the abundance of the good news to continue to flourish into our life. I speak over relationships, I speak over uh, spiritual relationships, husband and wife relationships, work relationships, I speak over businesses, I speak over people making decisions, I speak over people and their everyday responsibilities. Lord, I could just continue to speak life to it, that Lord, that you shine your light in every area of our lives, that we continue to embrace the abundant life here and now, that we live in the fullness and the completeness that you provided and given to us freely in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Amen. You're gonna, he'll be standing at the door signing autographs. God is good. I didn't give you a lot of... He's leaving. <laughs> How many enjoyed that? When to hear that? How many enjoyed them stories? I think sometimes... I think we always need to be... I, I believe in preaching, but I think sometimes just hearing some of the stories is just as good because there was preaching in the story that changed their story. There was ministering in their life that changed their story. So I just want to encourage you today. I just want to encourage you to remind you of how much God loves you, how much cares for you, how much he is for you. Even when it doesn't look like it, seem like it, when we have the boldness to continue trusting that, it will change the consciousness, change our heart, and how we have momentum towards life. Because when we have the boldness to get up, it's not just I believe. How many here, I love believing. 
But how many like knowing? I believe, I believe that Shauna loves me. What is the difference between her, I believe she loves me, and knowing she loves me? Night and day difference. I believe God loves me versus I know that he loves me so much that he sent his son into the world, not to condemn, but to save that which was lost. He was never lost. We got lost. And he helped us get back on the journey. So wherever you're at on the journey, wherever life is, he, he, he is here to help you to get, to get on the right path and direction in life. He wants to help you not just get to heaven, but to allow heaven to show up in all areas of your life. And even if you failed at it, just like he said, Kurt said, Jimmy said, even if you failed at it a hundred different ways, he never gives up on you. He never gives up on you. And he wants to put you in his hall of fame and, and write your name down in a, in a book of life. So if you receive that salvation, receive that gift of life, embrace it and allow it to change how you do everything. So stand to your feet. We had a good day? Yes. Great day. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, say with me, I'm quick and sharp, bright and smart, healthy, wealthy, and wise, good looking, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, and have a blessed day.